Well, our next guest says those debt maturities were mainly elephant in the room. Joining us now is BMO Capital Markets, John Kim. John, always good to have you here. Um, listen, I think our viewers at this point understand there's a lot more to REITs and a lot more to real estate than just commercial and office, which is yep. really a relatively small part. But we talk about it a lot for obvious reasons. What are you seeing there, particularly in light of, I guess, CPPIB's recent sale of two JV stakes uh, with Boston Properties, you know, saying, hey, we're out of here. Yeah. I mean, that was a potentially ominous sign. You have a very sophisticated owner uh, with low cost of capital looking to reduce their office exposure. And, you know, it's not a complete surprise, but they've been pretty dedicated to this market for a while. Uh, the rumblings are that there could be others that follow suit. And that would not be a positive sign for the market. Having said that, we're just going through uh, earnings season right now. Occupancy is held up. Leasing activities picked up, especially in, in New York and Boston. So the, I, w I would say the news has been mixed so far, and it's going to be a very fluid situation. We've afterwards. had any number of people join us recently who also seem to be manning or, uh, or raising uh, distressed funds, so to mm -hmm. speak, to put to work perhaps for certain properties where they can come in with some equity at least that's required. Is that going to stabilize the market? Are we there yet in terms of where that money can be deployed and perhaps generate a real return? I think so. I mean, the reality is values have been reset. And so if you can get equity and other uh, investors in, at that lower bar of, of asset values, then we could start uh, leasing activity picking up at a lower rent so you can get a decent return on that. So I think that's probably good for the market, although it's going to be painful for existing owners a are, lot of assets. Are there REITs that have large cash positions perhaps that also can take advantage of this reset in the market? In multifamily, where there is uh, a lot of refinancing, the multifamily REITs have all very good balance sheets. In office, a little bit more nuanced. Uh, Boston Properties has great balance sheet, has good access to joint venture partners. Uh, some of the other REITs that we like with New York Exposure, they don't have great balance sheets. SL Green, Vernado, but they're very sophisticated owners and, again, have access to capital in other ways rather than using it on balance sheet. Uh, but we like Boston Properties, Empire State Realty, Cousins Properties is another one that we like a lot with very strong balance sheets and good assets. Yeah, I was just going to ask how you pick the winners and losers in your coverage universe. You have a probably more holds, I think, than buys mm -hmm. at this point. But you do have some buys on some when – the, when the industry is going through such a reckoning – how do, you, how do you determine which ones to buy? It's, it's really just what the market, how the market values some of these companies and whether or not we think that's fair. Um, some of these office names are trading at massive discounts to NAV and to our DCF estimates, and the short interest positions are very high for some of these companies. So I think the sentiment doesn't quite match where we think the asset values ultimately shake out. Does it matter if the Fed cuts in June or July, if we've already seen a pretty pronounced move down in market rates? Well, as long as the, the, the view is the interest rates are not going to go up. If it's going to come down, whether or not it's this year or delayed towards the end of the year or next year, I think that's fine. We just need to see some stabilization in interest rates. But to be clear, when it comes to commercial, particularly office, yeah. I mean, we haven't put the bottom in yet, have we? I would say it, it, it's definitely a bifurcated market. I would say asset values could still go down. We might start to realize that now that some of the activity is going to pick up and some of these debt maturities will be addressed. So I don't think we're quite at the bottom at, for commodity assets and maybe for the average. But for top-end premium assets, I think we've, we've already passed the bottom. Yeah.